TypeScript is one of the fastest growing programming languages in recent years, mostly because some of you guys can't stop talking about how amazing it is to recreate the entire Java Enterprise ecosystem inside every to-do app. So now we've got interfaces, generics, dependency injection, and all the ceremony needed to pretend like front-end development is an actual job. And someday you will be a real boy. A real boy! So once you accept that there is no way around TypeScript these days, you'll probably want to get really good at it. And this video is the perfect place to start, because in the next few minutes, we'll review 10 advanced TypeScript concepts, which will bulletproof your code, and will probably force your colleagues to ask ChatGPT for help just to understand what you wrote. Since this is all about types, the first thing you need to realize is that TS's type system is really flexible, and you can use indexed access to extract element types. Using bracket notation, you can reference the type of a specific property or element directly from another type. This is called indexed access types, and it's one of the simplest ways to keep your types consistent across large code bases, because it allows you to avoid type definition duplication. And, of course, this is just the beginning of the type system power. Once you are familiar with TypeScript, you get to the point where you're not just consuming types, you're actively teaching the compiler how to think. And this is where user-defined type guards come in. Let me explain. At runtime, this code will work because all types are stripped, but at compile time, TS will treat X as unknown, so accessing any property of X will be illegal regardless of your validation. And to fix this, our validation function has to return information about what the check is actually proving. Now, the return type isn't a boolean anymore, and the compiler knows that if this function returns true, you are allowed to assume that X is a person from this point forward. And, once you start defining your own type guards, the next logical step is to make sure your code stays future-proof. Because, trust me, once you play the type safety game, the pain never ends. It's all an endless cycle of adding more layers of protection against the incompetence of your future self. Exhaustive never comes in handy when you're working with union types and you want to make absolutely sure every possible case is handled before your code ever runs. Once a new value is added to the union, TypeScript will immediately flag an error in the default branch. The never type literally means this should be impossible. So, when TypeScript complains that something is a never, it's your cue that your supposedly exhaustive logic isn't actually exhaustive anymore. And just when you think you've achieved perfect type safety, you'll realize you are currently here. The satisfies operator is used when you want TypeScript to verify that an object matches a certain type, but without losing the exact literal values it contains. In other words, instead of forcing your object to become that type, it only checks that the object conforms to it. This is especially useful when you're defining configurations, because otherwise, TypeScript tends to widen all your literal types until everything becomes just string or number. With satisfies, you get the best of both worlds since the compiler checks your object against the desired type and still keeps your precise values around for future inference. And the fun doesn't stop here. Once complex conditional types come into play, you'll probably end up needing features like infer. Infer is used inside conditional types to extract a type parameter from another type since it allows TypeScript to capture a specific type from within a more complex type definition and reuse it elsewhere. It is commonly used to extract the inner type from arrays, promises, or functions. For example, you can get the element type of an array, the resolve type of a promise, or the argument and return types of a function. This is kind of useful when building generic utility types that work with unknown structures, and is really useful when you want to confuse and frustrate your colleagues. Okay, enough with the type theory, let's spend a few minutes on some more practical examples. In JavaScript, arrays and objects are mutable by default, so defining a list as constant doesn't do much other than stopping you from reassigning the variable itself. You can solve this in TypeScript with the read-only keyword, which tells the compiler that a property, array, or tuple element cannot be reassigned. Now, all structural modifications from pushing to sorting are prevented. But if you want to really lock everything in place, you use as const. Now everything becomes deeply read-only, which means even nested values can't be reassigned, so all values are freezed at the point of declaration. And since we mentioned tuples, a nice trick that enhances your code reliability is adding labels to its elements. Tuples in TypeScript are just fixed-length arrays with defined types for each position, but when you add labels, you make them self-documenting. And this has the potential to save you a lot of headaches in situations where you are working with dimensions or positions where mixing up the tuple values can lead to a lot of confusion. The thing is that even though I'm using TS almost daily, it still manages to surprise me with small but powerful hidden features that can really improve the reliability of your code. But before we look at template literal types, let me tell you a few words about today's sponsor. 
Savala is an all-in-one, no-friction platform as a service for deploying anything ranging from interactive apps to databases or static sites, offering cloud-native performance and a seamless dev experience with advanced deployment pipelines, instant preview for apps or static websites, and one-click deploy templates to accelerate your development process. Under the hood, Savala is leveraging Google Kubernetes engine across 25 regions, and thanks to Cloudflare's Edge network integration, your static content is globally optimized for speed. Check out the link in the description and you can get started for free with a $50 credit, no hidden fees and predictable payments. Back to the video, template literal types let you construct types using string interpolation. This is great because it allows you to enforce naming conventions. For instance, if you want every property in an object to start with the on preposition followed by a capital letter, you can actually encode that rule in the type system. And what's more interesting is that we can combine template literals with unions and map types to build types that scale automatically. This is where mapped types modifiers come in. With mapped types, you can iterate over keys in another type and apply transformations like making every property optional, read-only or nullable. This is the backbone of most utility types like partial, required, read-only or record, and you can easily define your own too. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Your real type journey is just beginning because this is when you'll start combining your types in very interesting and useful ways. When you apply a conditional type to a union, TypeScript distributes that condition to each member of the union individually. This is called distributive conditional types and it enables all sorts of type level filtering, transforming or matching logic. Let's look at the basic conditional type. What's interesting is that when you pass a union type into it, TS doesn't just treat a union as a single thing. It splits it up and applies the condition to each part individually. So when we define a clean type with a union, TS will evaluate this code to this construct, which in turn becomes this. Never represents a type that has no possible value, it will get erased, and the final result will be a string or number. This becomes useful when you want to filter or transform a union. In practice, this means you can write utility types that act like a filter at the type level. Let's say you're working with some sketchy third-party API that gives you back a mess like this. Of course, you don't want to deal with null and undefined every time you touch this data, so you can sanitize it at the type level. Now, you can restrict function inputs, infer cleaner return types, or narrow values after a runtime check without repeating yourself. Alright, so now that you've filtered out all the garbage from a union, let's push things even further, because what's the point of clean types if you can't also compose them into something even more incomprehensible? So, as a bonus, let's look at recursive types. It might sound like a surprise, but in TypeScript you can define things like these. This is a recursive type because JSON is defined in terms of itself. Recursive types unlock powerful patterns, especially when working with trees, nested objects, or even things like form schemas. But remember that once you start nesting recursive conditional types and mapped types together, code readability decreases fast while job security increases fast. As I always say, they can't fire you if they can't find anyone willing to maintain the pile of code you wrote. And, of course, the fun doesn't stop here because you can also infer values inside recursive types. Imagine you have a tree structure and you want to extract all the leaf values. Of course, thanks to the TypeScript Swiss Army knife you can do it, but the second you see infer leaf inside a recursive conditional that calls itself, you should probably close your laptop and consider a different career. Before wrapping things up, I should probably mention that I actually like TypeScript and I strongly believe in a strong type system. However, this doesn't stop me from making fun of some of the useless complexity we pour into our codebases these days. If you like this video, you should check out some of these ones next. Also, please violently smash all the buttons YouTube is throwing at you these days, and until next time, thank you for watching.